Good day to D and welcome to your next lesson on solving systems of equations. Our goal today is to solve systems of equations that have non-integer coefficients. It's going to get a little bit messy because not all systems of equations have those nice integer coefficients and we need to know what to do to deal with them. So we're going to start first with fractional coefficients and we can make our life easier if we clear the fractions in each equation at the very start. And remember to do this, it's the same way that we did it when we were just dealing with linear equations, we multiply through by the lowest common multiple of all of the denominators. So um, just a note here, the lowest common multiple cannot be any smaller than the biggest denominator. So keep that in mind, you have to multiply by a number that is at least as big as the biggest denominator. So we're going to take a look at this system of equations. They have fractional coefficients. Um, this here could be a half x, so it actually has a coefficient of a half, but it's easier to write it so that um, it just has a denominator rather than, uh, than having the fraction out front. And the way we're going to get rid of this, that's equation one, this is our equation two, the way we get rid of our fractions is we multiply through by the lowest common multiple of the denominator. So take a look at our two denominators. And we have to think of things that are divisible by both 2 and 8. And we can't have any smaller than 8 because that is our bigger denominator. 8 won't go into anything smaller than 8. So we have to start at 8. And it's kind of nice here because 2 goes into 8. So I can use 8 as my common multiple. And what I do is I multiply everything through by that 8. And when I write down here, I'm going to say, okay, I took equation number one and I multiplied it through by eight. So this two goes into eight four times. So now I just have four times x, which is four x. This eight here goes into this eight one time. So now I just have one y plus y. And that's going to equal four times eight, which is 32. And this is our equation two. Oops, sorry, our equation three. Now the second equation, I have to look for the lowest common multiple between 2 and 3. So I'm looking for, it can't be any smaller than 3. And 2 doesn't go into 3, so I have to go up a little further. So the next multiple of 3 is 6, and 2 goes into 6 as well. So 6 is what we need. So I'm going to multiply everything by 6 to clear out those fractions. 3 goes into 6 twice. 2 goes into 6 three times. And I don't do any cancelling here because that's just straight multiplying. There's no denominator. You can only de cancel because cancelling is essentially division and denominators are essentially division. So equation number two, I'm going to multiply by six. And when I multiply through by six, I get 2x minus 3y equals negative 12. And that is my equation four. Now that I have those uh, equations like that, um, I can solve by substitution or by elimination, whichever one I want. And for this one, this one's pretty easy to solve by substitution, so maybe I'm going to have a look and solve it by substitution. I'm going to take equation 3, and I'm going to rearrange equation 3 so that my y is by itself, so I have... Uh, y equals 32 minus 4x, and that's my equation 3. Now I'm going to sub equation 3 back into the equation that I did not use from this pair, and that would be equation, uh, oops, sorry, this is equation 5. That would be equation 4 I haven't used yet. So I'm going to say sub y in equation 4. And so I have 2x minus 3y, but instead of y, I'm going to write 32 minus 4x because I was told that y actually equals 32 minus 4x. And that equals 32. Or, sorry, negative 12. Now I'm just going to solve this like I would any um, linear equation. Multiply that negative 3 through the brackets, and I get negative 96 plus 12x, and that equals negative 12. 
collect like terms on this side of the equation and I get 14x minus 96. And that equals negative 12. Add 96 to both times and I get both sides and I get 14x equals 84. And divide both sides by 14 and x equals 6. So even though we started off with some uh, messy numbers, we ended up with a really nice number at x equals 6. Uh, now I need to figure out what our y is. So I'm going to sub x back in and I can put x anywhere I want. I can put x all the way back into equation 1. But it has fractions, so I don't want to do that. I can put it into equation 2, but it has fractions. I don't want to do that. I can put it into 3, 4, or the best place to put it is right here in equation 5 because I already have y completely by itself. So that I've done most of the work. So we're going to sub back into equation 5, which says y equals 32 minus 4 times x. But instead of x, we're going to write 6 because I know x is 6. So 32 minus 24 gives us an answer of 8. So if I were going to state the solution, I would say, therefore, our solution is 6, 8. If I graphed those two lines, uh, which would be messy because they've got all those fractions in them, um, they would cross at the point 6, 8. Now, going to the next one. This is where we have decimal coefficients. Now, decimals aren't as bad to work with as fractions. And if you want to work with decimals, you can. Um, but if we multiply through by a power of 10 with as many zeros that will shift the decimal place over uh, so that the decimal is no longer there, then we have whole numbers to work with. And you can choose to work with decimals instead of getting rid of them uh, because sometimes the num numbers become really big uh, and you don't want to work with really big numbers, but I'm going to show you how to get rid of them just in case. So that's our equation one and our equation two. Now taking a look, I have to move the decimal one place in all of these cases to get a whole number, but over here I have to move the decimal two places, which means that I have to multiply by the power of 10 with two zeros, which is 100. So for equation one, I'm going to multiply by 100, and I get 170x plus 350y equals 1. And that's my new equation three. Notice the numbers are rather big, but they're whole numbers, so we don't have decimals anymore. Now in equation number 2, I can multiply it by 10 because the most number of places I have to move the decimal in that equation is 1, so I only need 1 zero on my power of 10. So that would be 6x plus 12y equals 0, and that's my equation 4. Now we could choose to solve this by substitution if we wanted to. Uh, and I think substitution is probably the way to go on this one um, because I can get one of these by itself very, very easily. Uh, so I'm going to take equation 4 and rearrange it. Right now it says 6x plus 12y equals 0. But if I subtract y on both sides, I get 6x equals negative 12y, and then divide both sides by 6, I get x equals negative 2y. And I could have solved by elimination, but being able to line these things up is kind of a nuisance here, and I was able to find this fairly simply, and we're going to call that our equation 5. So now I'm going to take equation 5 and sub it back into the equation I have not used yet, which is equation 3 because this thing came from equation 4. So I say sub 5 in equation 4, and that, oops, oh, sorry, 3. And so that's 170x, but I know x is negative 2y, plus 350y, and that's going to equal 1. So this is um, negative 340y plus 350y equals 1. And negative 340 plus 350 is 10. 10y equals 1. 
y equals one tenth, or since this was given to us in decimal form in the first place, it's probably best to leave it in decimal form. So my y is 0 0.1. And since I know my y, I can now find my x. So we say sub y in, and the easiest place to sub y into is back into equation 5. So let me just leave some room here. We're going to sub y in 5. And if I sub y in 5, I have x equals negative 2 times 0 0.1, which is negative 0 0.2. So there is my answer for that one. Now the last thing we're going to do is where we actually don't have numbers for coefficients at all. This is called literal coefficients. Literal coefficients means that the coefficients are unknown, or in other words, they're variables too. We need to treat them as variables while at the same time solving for x and y. So note it's usually easier to go back and solve for the second variable by elimination as well, as the first variable is often a complicated expression that is difficult to sub back into the equations. So here we've got two different equations equations that look pretty messy. I'm going to call this equation 1 equation 2. Now we're solving for x and y uh, and we're going to do it by elimination because that's much easier than substitution especially since there's no um, no variable here that doesn't have a coefficient. They've all got at least one literal coefficient. But take a look here. These have the same coefficient. So if I add those two equations together they're going to go away. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to add those two equations together. I'm going to take equation 1 and add equation 2. And so I'm going to get 2ax plus ax. And that's going to equal a plus b plus 3a when I add those equations together. These things went away when I added them together, so I'm just kind of ignoring them now. Uh, and I'm still solving for x. So 2ax plus ax is actually 3ax. And over here I've got an a and a 3a, so I've got 4a and a b. And I want to get x by itself. This 3a is stopping x from being by itself, so I have to divide both sides by 3a. And so those cancel, and I get x equals 4a plus b over 3a. Now, that wasn't all that tough, especially since I had um, some uh, had the same coefficients to start with here. But this is a complicated expression, so I'm not going to sub that back into one of my first two equations because it would be harder than if I just solved by elimination in the first place. So I want to make these two things have the same coefficient. And the only thing that's missing from that one is a 2. So if I multiply the second equation by 2, then I will have these two, I will have the x's with the same coefficient. So I'm going to take equation 2 and multiply it by 2 to give me 2ax minus 2by, and that's going to equal 6a when I multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to bring down equation 1, which was 2ax, this looks like a 2, 2ax plus by, and that's going to equal a plus b. I didn't change anything with it, I just brought it back down. So this equation over here I'm going to call my equation 3, and this equation is still equation 1 uh, because it hasn't... I haven't changed it any. So now I'm going to take equation 3, and since these coefficients are the same, and they have the same sign, I have to subtract them. So I'm going to take equation 3 and subtract 1. So negative 2b, subtract b, is what I have for the y's. So if I have negative 2b, subtract b, I have negative 3by. And over here, I have 6a, subtract a, so that's 5a, and then I have this 6a subtract b, there's nothing to go together there, so I need to subtract b. Now to get y completely by itself, I'm going to subtract by 3b, or sorry, divide by 3b on both sides. 
So those cancel, and I'm left with y equals 5a minus b divided by negative 3b. And that's my answer. Messy as it is, that is actually the answer with literal coefficients. And so that concludes our lesson for today.